The Path of Light by L.D. Barnett is a translation into English of the Bodhacharya Avatara of Shantideva, a manual of Mahayana Buddhism. This is an exploration of the perfection of patience, the perfect long suffering. In short, there is no way for a passionate man to find happiness. He who stoutly fights against wrath, the enemy that brings these and other sorrows, wins joy in this world and beyond. Nourished by discontent, hatred grows swollen and destroys me, and discontent springs from doing unpleasing works or from the baffling of desires. Then I will cut off the nourishment of my enemy, for this foeman's sole purpose is to slay me. What profits discontent if there is a remedy? And what profits it if there is none? We shrink from sorrow, defeat, rude speech, and dishonor for ourselves and our friends, and from the opposite of these for our enemies. There is nothing which practice cannot make easy. So by practice in slight sufferings we learn to bear great pains. Flies, stinging creatures, gnats, hunger, thirst, and other like pains, fierce itch and other like miseries, look us upon these as profitless. Before cold heat, rain, wind, travel, sickness, bondage, and blows be not tender and delicate, else thy anger, anguish will increase. As a bodily pain arises unwilled, so too wrath perforce arises unwilled in the offender. The primal matter and soul of which forsooth men talk are imaginations. They do not come into being with consciousness of doing so. Before coming into being, they do not exist. And who can then desire to come into being? If the soul is active upon its objects, it will not cease thence. And if it is constant, impassive, and like the ether, it is manifestly inactive, for though he joined to, to outer forces, how can a changeless thing act? What part of the action is done by a thing at the time of action is the same as before it, if its own action is the bond between soul and object, what is the ground of this? Thus everything depends on a cause and this cause is likewise not independent. In no way then can wrath be felt against beings mechanical as phantoms. Maddened by passions, striving for their own destruction, there can be only pity for them. How should we be angered? If it is the nature of fools to hurt their fellows, then it is wrong for me to feel anger against them, as it is, uh, to be wroth with fire, which naturally burns me. And if, again, it is a passing frailty, and creatures are upright of nature, then it is wrong for me to be angered against them as against the air when smoke fills it. I hate him to speak who speaks to my blame, for he brings creatures to destruction, then why are you not angry against him who rails at others? Thou bearest with the unkindly when their unkindness touches others, and bearest not with the caviller who touches on the growth of your own vices. It is unmeet for me to hate them that destroy or revile images, sanctuaries, or the good law, for the enlightened and their company thereby take no hurt. If men wrong thy dear ones, masters, brothers, and the rest, know that as before outer forces are working and restrain thy wrath, whether it be wrought by a thing with or without thought, suffering is assured to living beings. It is found in whatever has thought, then bear with it. Some in their blindness do wrong, others in their blindness are wroth with them, who of these may we call blameless, and whom guilty? What hast thou done, so that thou art thus afflicted now by others? 
All are under the sway of their own works. Who am I to undo this? Knowing this, I will strive to do righteousness, so that all may be full of love for one another. If some find delight in praising one of high worth, why then, my spirit, does you, do you not rejoice likewise in praising him? Such joy will bring thee no blame. It will be a fountain of happiness, and it is not forbidden by men of worth. It is the noblest way to win over thy fellows. If thou art pleased, because he who praises, if you're not pleased, because he who praises is glad, then thou would of uh, Forbid such things as payment for service, and seen and unseen rewards alike perish. Thou art willing for your neighbor to be glad when he praises your worth, but you're loath to be thyself glad when another's worth is praised. Thou hast framed the thought of enlightenment, bodhicitta, in the desire to make all creatures happy. Then why are you now wroth with creatures who of themselves find happiness. Forsooth, thou wouldst have all beings become Buddhas and worthy of the three worlds' worship. Then why are you vexed to see their brief honors? Nay, I am glad, forsooth, because my neighbor is pleased with me. But what is it to me if my neighbor is pleased with me or with another? The joy is his. Not the smallest share of it is mine. If happiness brings, springs from the joy of others, then I should have it in every event. So why am I not glad when men rejoice and honor each, each other? Then gladness arises within me only because I am praised, and thus, being foreign to myself, it is an utter child's play. We find many beggars in the world, but few who will do us hurt. For if I do no wrong, no man, no man will wrong me. Then an enemy is like a treasure found in my house, one without labor of mine. I must cherish him, for he is a helper in the way to enlightenment. Thus the fruit of my patience is won by me and by him together. To him must be given the first share, for he is the cause of my patience. But my enemy seeks not, not to prosper prosper my patience, and therefore he is not worthy of honor. Nay, why then do we honor the good law, the unconscious thing of blessing? Nay, his purpose is to do me hurt. But if an enemy is therefore not honored, how can I likewise show pace, patience toward him, as though he were intent, like a physician, on my welfare? It is by reason, reason of his evil design that my patience is born, therefore he is the cause of patience, and as worthy of honor from me as the good law. Therefore a saint has told of the domain of creatures and the domain of conquerors, for by seeking the favor of creatures and conquerors, many have risen to supreme fortune, since both creatures and conquerors is the same gift of the qualities of the enlightened, how may we deal partially and refuse to creatures the reverence shown to the conquerors? The greatness of purpose lies not in itself, but in its works. Hence creatures have like greatness, and therein they are like unto the enlightened. The greatness of creatures is that he who has the spirit of kindliness towards them wins worship the greatness of the enlightened is that merit is won by the love towards them. Thus creatures are like unto the conquerors by giving in part the dower of the qualities of the enlightened, albeit none more, none of them are peer to the enlightened, which are oceans of virtues, infinites of parts, and even one atom's small virtue from these soul stores of the essence of the virtues be found in any creature, the whole threefold world is not enough for his worship. In creatures is found little power, but that most noble, for bringing forth the qualities of the enlightened according to that little power, creatures should be honored. Moreover, 
What perfect reparation can be made to those kinsmen without guile, these doers of immeasurable kindness, save the service of creatures? They tear their own bodies, they go down into the hell of Vici, and all for the welfare of others. Then, even to them who most sorely wrong us, we must do all manner of good. How dare I chew pride instead of a slave's humbleness towards these masters for who for whose sake my masters are heedless of their own lives when they are happy the saints are rejoiced and wroth when they are distressed in their gladness is the gladness of all the saints when they are wronged wrong is done to the saints as one whose body is entirely in flame finds no comfort in any things of desire so when creatures are distressed, these beings of mercy have no way to find pleasure. For as much as I have done hurt to all these most compassionate beings by doing hurt to living things, I confess now my sin. May the saints pardon me for the wrong that I have done them. To win the grace of the blessed ones today, I make myself utterly a slave to the world. Let the crowds of living beings set their feet upon my head or smite me, and the Lord of the world be glad. Beyond all doubt, these merciful ones have made the whole universe their own. Truly it is our lords who show themselves in the form of creatures, and dare we despise them? It is this that moves the blessed to grace, that wins my true end, and that wipes away the misery from the world. Then, be this my vow. Thank you.